So you might be looking at this Edmonton Oilers team and thinking, this doesn't look right here. Why is Jack Eichel a member of the Edmonton Oilers? And then we're going to go over to the Buffalo Sabres and we're going to see Connor McDavid here. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Today, we're going to be swapping the careers of Connor McDavid and Jack Eichel. Both of these guys were taken in the same draft. Of course, McDavid went number one overall and Jack Eichel, he went number two. But what if Edmonton screwed up and took Jack Eichel instead and Connor McDavid dropped to two? Well, I'm going to be simulating these guys' careers over the next eight NHL games and we're going to see how things would have changed. So there's no point wasting any more time here. Let's go ahead and simulate through season number one. I'm very excited to see what Jack Eichel is going to be able to do with this Edmonton Oilers team over the next how many years? Because let's face it, when Jack Eichel was in Buffalo, that team refused to build around him. So is Jack Eichel actually better than Connor McDavid? Because I added him to the Edmonton Oilers and they finished third in the entire league, 51, 24, and 7. Meanwhile, the Buffalo Sabres, where did they finish? They did not make the playoffs. They were actually one of the worst teams in the entire league, 36, 37, and 9, 24th in the entire league. Meanwhile, Edmonton, third in the entire league? Nah, Jack Eichel might be getting a Stanley Cup in year number one, and that would be crazy. It was an impressive rookie campaign for Jack Eichel, who's going to be picking up 36 goals and 29 helpers for 65 points, putting him fifth on the team in scoring. Meanwhile, Taylor Hall is going to be leading the way with 78 points. Great season from him. But what was Connor McDavid up to? Because the way that Buffalo Sabres team performed, I'm assuming he wasn't looking that great. And he was was 57 points, 13 goals, and 44 helpers. Now, maybe this Buffalo Sabres team is just way worse than I thought they were, because I mean, I saw guys like Ryan O'Reilly, Evander Kane, I'm like, they couldn't be that bad. And then McDavid only picked up 57 points, and now that I'm looking at the rest of the guys on this team, no, this is not a good Buffalo Sabres team. I understand why they suck this much. Shout out to a young Rasmus Ristin Alainen, though. Also, we might as well do a little throwback since we're here. Sidney Crosby's leading the league with 90 points, Stammer's finishing second with 90, and Vladimir Tarasenko, an absolute legend, 88 points, finishing third in the entire league. Also, Oliver Ekman Larson's leading all defensemen in points, and he's also 12th in the entire league with 77 points. Nah, real talk, this new universe is getting a bit out of hand. And since we're in a new universe, I'm expecting a different outcome, and Edmonton, let's see if you guys can win a Stanley Cup in year one. And of course, it's not gonna be an easy task. You got the Winnipeg Jets, and you got smoke 6 nothing in game one. Now, that's a tough look, but I mean, you do have a 3-2 series lead. Can you close out in game six? No, you can't, so that means we're headed to game seven elimination. So I don't need to stress the significance of this matchup. Game seven of the first round can this team make it out? We're picking up two goals in the first period. They're not going to be picking up any in the second, but they still got themselves a two-goal lead, and they're going to close out with the two-goal lead. They're finishing this one up 2-0, and who's going to be leading the way in Game 7? Teddy Purcell. No, but seriously, how are we getting to Game 7, and Teddy Purcell is the hero? Like, no disrespect to Teddy Purcell by any means, but out of all the players in this Edmonton Oilers team, like, I mean, we got Taylor Hall, Jordan Eberle, The Nuge, Jack Eichel. Teddy Purcell is saving the day. Very interesting. Also, we have the Anaheim Ducks coming up next. So we just casually simulate through the first four games here. Ideally win four straight, but I don't think that's happening. And it's taking a long time to simulate here, but now we're down 3-1 in the series. I don't think we're going to be able to bounce back in this one. We're dropping game five. And just like that, the Edmonton Oilers are falling in the second round. But I mean, it's not like we lost to any scrub during the postseason because the Anaheim Ducks are going to go on to win the Stanley Cup final, taking down the Tampa Bay Lightning in five games. And they also swept the St. Louis Blues. Hate to see that one, but still, Anaheim went on a bit of a run. And we have to consider, the first time Jack Eichel made the postseason in his real NHL career was this season when they won the Stanley Cup. In this re-simulation, he's making the playoffs in year number one. So I think that's a good sign for things to come. Jack Eichel didn't have the greatest postseason by any means, seven points in 12 games, five goals and two assists. But hey, he's a 19 year old right now. He's still pretty young. He's gonna develop over these next few games. And once we get to NHL like 21, 22, when he's got a prime Leon Dreisaitl on his side, no, nah, that's going to be a difference maker for sure. So we're moving on to NHL 17 and Carmack David's ready to dominate the league. He's up to a 92 overall, the highest overall on the Buffalo Sabres. He's got Kyle Post on his right wing, Evander Kane on his left, and down the middle, we also got Ryan O'Reilly here before he gets traded to the St. Louis Blues. He had some tough years in Buffalo to say the least. Moving on over to Edmonton, Jack Eichel, he actually isn't the highest overall on this team. He is tied with the new giant 86 overall, but Lucic is going to be leading the way in an 88. Lucic, Jack Eichel, and Jordan Everly on the first line. I don't see this team making the playoffs if I'm going to be completely honest. Honest. Like Buffalo, maybe, because you got a 92 overall Car McDavid. You got some decent forward depth here. But Edmonton, on the other hand, Drysaw hasn't developed yet. He's only an 84 overall, and the forward core here is not looking that great. And I don't think the defensive core is looking that strong either. I mean, it's not too bad. I guess we'll see what happens. So once again, the Edmonton Oilers are gonna be looking fantastic this season, finishing third in the entire league with a 47, 27, and 8 record. But the real story is the Buffalo Sabres, who went from 24th in the league last season 
I think they were 24th to 46, 28, and 8, and they're fifth in the entire league. Carmen McDavid's made the postseason. Jack Eichel's in the postseason. Can both of these guys match up against each other in the Stanley Cup final? Probably not yet because both of these teams still aren't that great. Give it two or three more years. And to top off the Edmonton Oilers season, Jack Eichel's going to be having a career year. It's his first point of game season. He's got 31 goals and 52 helpers for 83 points. Well, Connor McDavid, what were you up to? I'm expecting you were over a point a game as well. Ain't no way you're going to allow Jack Eichel to outscore you like that. Oh, wow. 61 points, 16 goals, 45 helpers. Okay, not only did you get outscored by Jack Eichel, but you weren't even close to him. You were like, what? 22 points off, he had 83 points, right? I'm pretty sure he had 83 points. That means McDavid was 22 points away. I understand this Buffalo Stavers team isn't the best in the world, but 22 points away from Jack Eichel? No, that's a tough look. So we got both of these teams in the postseason, and I can't be following both of them at the same time, but I'm going to focus on the Buffalo Sabres in this game, seeing as it is their first time in the postseason. And also, now that I follow the Buffalo Sabres, I'm very interested in how the Edmonton Oilers do, because I'm curious to see if like the team I follow does significantly worse than the team I don't follow. But in saying that, Buffalo did just sweep the Boston Bruins. Well, it's not looking that great here. You're down 3-2 in the series. Can we bounce back in game six? Hopefully, doesn't look like it. Edmonton's falling in the first round, while Buffalo's completing the sweep. After that clean sweep for the Buffalo Sabres, they're going to take on the Florida Panthers in the second round, and we definitely can't be sleeping on the Florida Panthers because they smoked the Ottawa Senators in five games. And that was a decent Ottawa Senators team too. I mean, you had Mark Stone there, Eric Carlson was still there. I believe this is also the year they went to the Stanley Cup Final. Actually, no, they didn't make it to the Stanley Cup Final. They lost in Game 7, but they were still a pretty good team. What are we looking like in the series so far? We've split the first four games. Game 5 is going to be a massive one. I can't simulate unless I go to here. That's stupid, but it doesn't matter we're going to be dropping game five game six we got to win buffalo's got to make it to the conference finals that's not exactly what's happening we had ourselves a 2-1 series lead at one point and then we dropped three straight so with neither of our teams hoisting the stanley cup this season it looks like the washington capitals are as they're going to be taking down the calgary flames in six games ironically this is actually one year before they won the stanley cup in real life okay mcdavid you were an absolute ghost in the playoffs five points in 10 games that's not the Connor mcdavid i know if you don't step it up over these next few years i might have to step in i mean i'll step in and do absolutely nothing because it's up to you to perform but Jack Eichel you picked up four points in six games only one shy of Connor McDavid and he played an additional four games that's not a good look for you McDavid because right now Jack Eichel's having the better career so Buffalo you might have been able to make it to the second round of the playoffs last season if you guys make the playoffs this season Connor McDavid you might be better than Wayne Gretzky because look at this bottom six I am sorry there is absolutely no way this team sees any type of success it's not good Rasmus Russell line in 86 overall best guy here the rest of this is cooked Jake McCabe a young Jake McCabe shout out to him but i mean in between the pipes who do you got 84 overall robin leonard and chad johnson 80 overall he's 31 years old at this point nah this team is not going to see any success edmonton's not better in the goaltending department but i mean the team all around is better here dry style in an 87 overall is actually on the first line over jack eichel that's a very interesting decision but now that i'm looking at this edmonton oilers team they're honestly not much better than the buffalo sabers this team is also bad i mean they're better defensively by quite a bit actually but i mean the forward core nah this stinks however in saying that i I do believe NHL 18 is the year that they completely changed the overall system and a lot of players dropped in overall so Edmonton might not be as bad as I actually think but in saying that we're currently about a 500 team so maybe we aren't very good. So we're definitely going to be seeing a drop off from our two teams here. The Edmonton Oilers are finishing 43, 29, and 10, 7th in the entire league and the Buffalo Sabres it doesn't look like they're making the playoffs. They're actually one of the worst teams in the entire league once again. 25th with a 37, 35, and 10 record. Let's be completely honest though. Connor McDavid you didn't have a hope with that Buffalo Sabres record roster jack eichel i understand why you never made the playoffs up until last season because based on what they had around you there was no way you were going to be able to succeed okay eichel we have to have a discussion here because these numbers this ain't it my guy 60 points 34 goals 26 assists you were a point a game last season and then this happened i mean to be fair the edmonton oilers aren't a very good team right now i'm scared to look at mcdavid's numbers though okay these aren't bad by any means 77 points almost a point a game 32 goals 45 helpers he's leading the team 15 more points than ryan o'reilly and the fact that he had a positive plus minus is actually astonishing to me. However, Buffalo, the regular season numbers you saw from McDavid don't matter because you guys sucked and missed the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Edmonton Oilers, you guys got the Arizona Coyotes in the first round. Jack Eichel, it's time to go on another deep postseason run, also known as getting out of the first round. So there's a handful of teams I refuse to lose to, and the Arizona Coyotes are one of them. Or is this the Phoenix Coyotes? It's either Arizona or Phoenix. I don't recall when they switched their name. All I know is we have a 3-1 series lead. We're taking them out in five games, and we're on to the second round. That was some light work for us moving on to the second round our next matchup is definitely not going to be any easier because now we have the san jose sharks to take on and we have to remember this is a prime san jose sharks core i mean this is with logan couture joe pavelski joe thornton 
All these guys are still on the team. We have a 3-1 series lead. All right, let's pack it up real quick. Not only are we taking game five, four to one, but we're taking the series four to one and we're off to the conference finals. Things are going way too smoothly right now. Like the San Jose Sharks, that's a fantastic team. This is around when they were in their prime. But we're not gonna have any issues with them, but I can guarantee we're gonna have a bunch of issues with this team coming up, the St. Louis Blues. One year before they end up winning the Stanley Cup, they actually missed the playoffs in this season. So it's good to see them making it in the simulation, but now we gotta take them on. And Vladimir Tarasenko isn't gonna go easy on us. So we already know this is our toughest matchup yet we're definitely going to need more than four games we're up 3-1 once again the third straight series we've had a 3-1 series lead we always close down game five but not this time we're off to game six and we're not going to be blowing a 3-1 series lead here and just like that jack eichel's made the stanley cup final in season number three so here we are in the stanley cup final we just took the st louis blues down a six game series but now we have the pittsburgh penguins they got crosby they got malkin they got chris letang they got jake getzel they have absolutely everyone they need and edmonton well they got jack eichel they got leon on dry sidle and that's about it two guys have been leading this team all the way to the stanley cup final we're going to simulate through the first four games and we split the series so far i'm actually very surprised by that i thought pittsburgh was going to sweep us game five's massive we're taking that one are we really going to be taking this in a six game series winning jack eichel a stanley cup no we aren't we're off to game seven game seven elimination stanley cup final it all comes down to this so just looking at the records of these two teams it's clear that the pittsburgh penguins are the favorite but they don't have jack eichel they don't have leon dry sidle and through two periods we've got ourselves a 1-0 lead who picked up the lone goal of the second period Lucic ain't no way Lucic scores the lone goal in this game we won the Stanley Cup because of Lucic you're kidding me right we shut the Pittsburgh Penguins out in game seven and Lucic is the man that won us the Stanley Cup and you know what since Lucic scored that OT winner to win us the Stanley Cup if this video gets 2,500 likes and we hit 47,000 subs in the next 24 hours I'll buy a Lucic jersey and I don't want to buy a Lucic jersey because they're like 250 bucks and that'd be a massive waste of money. But if y'all hit the subscriber milestone and like goal, then I'll do it. I need to know the player stats of our team. Dryside was incredible, 26 points. Lucic was fantastic, 25 and 83 overall. Mike Campbell-Larry was over a point a game at an 81 overall. Like Jack Eichel actually didn't even do that much. He picked up 14 points, five goals, nine assists, 23 points. Mike Campbell-Larry, I'm genuinely speechless. Like I actually have nothing to say about that. Goaltending, Cam Talbot was our man. 16 wins, two shouts, and 916 to 242. You held it down in between the pipes and Edmonton was able to win a Stanley Cup so maybe y'all should have drafted Jack Eichel over Connor McDavid because so far that's what it's looking like here so we've moved on to NHL 19 and the Edmonton Oilers are coming off a of Stanley Cup and it looks like they're going to be doing the same thing this time around Jack Eichel is going to be the second line center Leon Jarosaw is going to be the first line center they're looking for a similar result however I just don't think that's going to be happening look at how many 70 overalls are on this forward core right now we have four players above an 80 overall for the forward core and one of them is Alex Chason who's an 80 exactly luckily the defense isn't as bad as that forward core but in between the pipes we're not looking that great an 82 overall Miko Koskin and then a 71 overall backing him up no I can't see this Edmonton team succeeding by any means over in Buffalo 94 overall Connor McDavid's gonna be leading the way and I think this team's slightly better than the Edmonton Oilers well, I mean their forward core is I'm not sure if their entire team is defensively I guess they're not that bad they could probably rival the Edmonton Oilers forward core and in between the pipes they have Carter Hutton and this guy named Linus Allmark he's got fringe starter potential a backup role I don't think he'll amount to too much definitely not a Vesna winner. When the season came to an end, the Buffalo Sabres, led by Connor McDavid, are going to be making the postseason eighth in the entire league with a 46 31 5 record. And where's the Edmonton Oilers? It doesn't look like they're going to be making the Stanley Cup. Wow, did they actually finish dead last? 29th in the entire league. This team won a Stanley Cup in the last game, by the way, but 29th is crazy. McDavid, I'm honestly starting to wonder if you're ever going to crack 80 points, let alone 82. 76 points, 33 goals, 43 helpers. I mean, it's not a bad season, but you're also a 94 overall. I think you're the highest overall in the entire game. I'm expecting more production than this then again look at the buffalo sabers team you're on it's not good by any means now edmonton oilers jack eichel 50 points 13 goals 37 assists 50 points plus five i gotta look at the goaltending numbers on this team i just have to miko koskinen this is actually way better than i was expecting honestly i was expecting a save percentage of about 850 and a goals against of about 350 but these numbers not completely cooked but since edmonton can't repeat a stanley cup champs we're gonna have to find a new one this time around and hopefully it's the buffalo sabers as they're taking on the florida panthers in the first round now honestly i do not recall who's on this florida team i mean it's like jonathan huberto barkoff 
all those guys ekblad but i don't really remember who else is on this team we're gonna be splitting the first couple games is yager on the team at this point i can't even remember when yager left florida i'm gonna be completely honest so far we're down 3-2 in the series can we bounce back in game six this is an important one never mind we're dropping this one in an overtime loss two to one okay connor sheary just led our team with seven points mate david i gotta know your numbers real quick six points in six games i mean that's not terrible you were a point a game but i'm sorry you can't be letting connor sheary outscore you me personally i wouldn't let that happen as I go through these games and I keep swapping McDavid and Jack Eichel, every time I look at this Buffalo Sabres team, I'm like, man, we give Jack Eichel a lot of crap for not winning with nothing. Like, this team is abysmal. Jeff Skinner's here, a great piece. He had that one fantastic season with Jack Eichel, Sam Reinhart, and then the rest of this team is just not good. Like, there's not even any good young pieces here, except for Tage Thompson, St. Louis legend, by the way. Defensively, yeah, you have Rasmus Sedin, but that's about it. And none of them developed for the Buffalo Sabres. Meanwhile, in between the pipes, who do you have? Linus Allmark, a guy that's no longer on the team. Carter Hutton, a guy that's no longer on the team. Like this Buffalo Sabres team is abysmal. No wonder Jack Eichel can see any success. Meanwhile, over in Edmonton, at least you have Leon Dreisaitl, you have Ryan Nugent Hopkins, eventually you bring Zach Hyman to the team. Yeah, Yamamoto wasn't an incredible player, but he was a great depth piece. He eventually joins the team. And then wherever Jesse Pugliarvi is, I mean, he could play the fourth line. He was something. So unfortunately, neither of our teams were that good this season. And I don't think we should really be surprised by that. But luckily, Buffalo's making the postseason and finishing 18th in the entire league with a 40 36 and 6 record the only reason this team's making the playoffs is because the eastern conference for some reason just completely suck other than that they're not making the playoffs meanwhile edmonton's finishing 22nd nah we got to put a bit of respect on car mcdavid's name for taking the buffalo sabers all the way to the postseason because that shouldn't have even been possible we're going to take a quick look at edmonton first though jack eichel 25 goals 39 assists 64 points minus one the fact that you were only minus one is actually pretty impressive because this team absolutely stinks and shout out to leon dry for leaving the team well car mcdavid's actually having the same amount of points as Leon Dreisaitl, 71, 32 goals, 39 helpers, but you were minus 14. There is no reason this team should have made the playoffs. Like, no reason whatsoever. Linus Allmark, 32 wins, 3 shots, and 910, a 280. That's pretty impressive, seeing as this team was a complete dumpster fire. But now we have to take on the favored Tampa Bay Lightning, and let's just get this sweep over with quick. And of course, I'm talking about a sweep for us, because the Buffalo Sabres are going to completely dominate this team. How did we just split the series? There is no reason we should even be competing right now. We took game 5, and we won game six we just took down the top team in the entire league makes sense now that you took down the tampa bay lightning you might as well go on a bit of a run here and now we have the boston bruins a team that just swept the toronto maple leafs i guess even though we're in a new universe some things never change toronto falling to boston it's like a ritual at this point like it just has to happen every single year 3-1 series lead what's going on no like really what is going on here it makes no sense why we're competing right now. We just won game six and now we have the Washington Capitals. Honestly, this team's on a roll and I do not want to mess with it. So we're taking Washington on. Okay, yeah, we're getting smoked here. We're down 3-1 in the series. Can we make a comeback? Probably not. Hold on here. Are we actually making a bit of a comeback? Hold on here. Game seven. We were down what? 3-0 in the series? Yeah, we no, we were down 3-0 in the series and we've won three straight games now. Game seven, this is massive. If we can somehow make a 3-0 comeback here, it's going to happen. It's about to happen. We almost blew it in the third period, but it happened. The Buffalo Sabres, after being down 3-0 in the series, have bounced all the way back, and Connor McDavid single-handedly took this team all the way to the Stanley Cup Final. And who are we taking on? The Vegas Golden Knights. Keep in mind, Connor McDavid's going to be playing for this Vegas Golden Knights team in a handful of years. When I say a handful, I mean like two, because he's following Jack Eichel's career. Jack Eichel eventually goes to Vegas, so Connor McDavid's going to have to take his talents there too. We're going to simulate through this series. We've split the first four games. Game five is going to be massive, but we can take this one. We could win the series. We actually did. We're 18th in the entire league, by the way. Just want to mention that. Game seven. But we're 18th in the entire league. Connor McDavid, you're looking incredible so far. You picked up 28 points. Just pick up a few more in game seven. Game seven to win the Stanley Cup. We're picking up the first goal of the game. Shout out to Vladimir Saboka, St. Louis legend. Vegas is responding though. Marcia So and Stasny, they're making this a close game. Heading into the third period and we're going to be falling. Mark Stone, Alex Tuck, they're both picking up goals. We're falling in game seven of the Stanley Cup final. But let's be completely honest here. We lost because Connor McDavid didn't pick up a point in game seven. I mean, that's part of it. But even still, there is no reason why we should have made it all the way to game seven. We were 18th in the entire league but somehow made it to game seven of the Stanley Cup final. Somebody explain that to me because it just doesn't make sense. But anyways, there's no point wasting any more time here. We're moving on to NHL 21. So Connor McDavid, I thought I was familiar with your game. I really did. And then you brought this Buffalo Sabres team that finished 18th in the entire league in the last game 
all the way to the Stanley Cup final, but unfortunately fell in game seven. I knew you were a fantastic player, the best in the game right now, but that good I was not expecting. You did something I thought was impossible. Not only did you get that team to the playoffs, but the Stanley Cup final. That made no sense. Meanwhile, Edmonton, yeah, you guys can just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, maybe make the playoffs, that would be nice. But Jack Eichel, you're teaming up with Leon Drysdale once again on that first line. The bottom nine doesn't look great. Yeah, you heard me right, bottom nine. Not the bottom six, but the bottom nine. I mean, except for Nuge. Keep doing your thing, Nuge, you'll love to see it. Defensively, this team's actually pretty decent. I mean, you got all 80 overalls. In between the pipes, I mean, that's still an issue for you guys, but I mean, Buffalo, you got 84 overall, Linus Allmark, you got 95 overall, Connor McDavid, and it's important to mention, Connor McDavid, this is your last season on the Buffalo Sabres, because in NHL 22, Jack Eichel gets traded. So you have one last chance to win Buffalo a Stanley Cup, and if you're not able to, then you're off to Vegas, and you'll probably win a Stanley Cup in one of those two years, because that team's going to be absolutely elite with you. So in the back of my mind, I kind of expected this to happen once, but I didn't expect it to happen in NHL 21 of all games. So the Buffalo Sabres and Edmonton Oilers, what happened here? Because Edmonton's finishing 19th in the entire league, 39, 35, and 8. And you might have noticed, neither of these teams made the postseason, 36, 36, and 10. I mean, in the back of my mind, I did think there is a possibility that we are going to have one game where neither of these teams make the playoffs. McDavid, 78 points, 32 goals, 46 assists. But I mean, I was expecting that in like NHL 16, NHL 17, not in NHL 21 when the teams are a bit more established. Jack Eichel, 68 points. I mean, you were not good this season. 68 points isn't bad, but I mean, for Jack Eichel standards, no, I'm expecting more from you. But real talk, what's going on here? And just like that, Buffalo, your last chance at a Stanley Cup with Connor McDavid's over. This was literally your last shot. He's off to Vegas. Vegas now he's gonna get traded for whatever Vegas offered it was like Peyton Krebs Alex Tuck two first round picks I think I can't remember exactly what the full trade was but it was something like that for Jack Eichel congrats Tampa on winning a Stanley Cup now it's time to watch Connor McDavid dominate in Vegas so here we are in NHL 22 and the Edmonton Oilers are looking way better than they have in the past on the first line we got Jack Eichel Leon Dreisel Evander Kane and on the second line Zach Hyman Nugent Hopkins and Pugliarvi who's an 83 overall the bottom six doesn't look terrible so I mean that's actually a plus for once defensively this team's got a handful of good pieces and Darnell Nurse and Tyson Berry. Bouchard's here in an 82 overall. I mean, I would say there's no weaknesses, but there's definitely not a lot of strength. So, I mean, hey, we can live with it. In between the pipes, you have 82 overall Mike Smith. I guess you're going to die on that hill. You don't really have a choice. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. Connor McDavid's now on the Vegas Golden Knights as a part of the Jack Eichel trade. On the first line, we have McDavid, Pat Reddy, Stone. Second line's going to feature Riley Smith, Chandler Stevenson, Jonathan Marsh. So, the bottom six is elite. And then we have the defense, of course. Shea Theodore, Alex Petrangelo, Alec Martinez, Zach Whitecloud. And then the third pairing is actually still pretty decent. No need to worry about that. And in between the pipes, of course, an 86 overall Robin Leonard. I can't wait to see what this Vegas Golden Knights team does. Because now they have Carl McDavid. That's definitely an upgrade from Jack Eichel. And alongside Mark Stone and Max Pacioretty. No, nah, this Vegas team you're definitely going to have to watch out for. All right here, I got an issue with what happened. Don't worry, both of these teams made the playoffs. The Anaheim Ducks did better than both of them though. The Anaheim Ducks finished first in the entire league with a 51-27-4 record. Keep in mind, this is the Anaheim Ducks after the trade deadline two years ago, after they traded Ricardo Kell, after they traded Hampus Lindholm. First in the entire league. Vegas is third, Edmonton's fourth, St. Louis is fifth. Not too sure how that works. A lot of question marks looking at this. A lot indeed. Also, Buffalo made the playoffs without Jack Eichel and without Connor McDavid. Just thought I'd point that out. Connor McDavid, you continue to disappoint me, but at least you're averaging a point a game this time around. Hold on. Now we got to relax here for a sec. Jonathan Marceau, bro, what? 39 points. This is the least amount of points you've had since 2016 when you played for Tampa. So basically your first season in the league. You put up 39 points. What's going on here? I mean, McDavid, 83. I guess we can sort of celebrate that. It's over a point a game. But Marshall so only picking up 39 points and all. That's a joke. Edmonton, I'm actually curious to see what you did based on what's going on over here in Vegas. Jack Eichel, where are you putting up for numbers? 77 points, not too bad. 31 goals, 46 assists. Leon Dreisau is leading the way. No surprise there, 95 points. But nah, there's a lot of stupid things going on but there's one good thing about Anaheim finishing first it's gonna force an Edmonton Vegas matchup we're gonna have Jack Eichel taking on Connor McDavid I guess this matchup hasn't been seen since the postseason I was gonna say this matchup hasn't happened before but it literally just happened in the playoffs Vegas took down Edmonton and reached the Stanley Cup final so I mean we got Connor McDavid versus Jack Eichel one season earlier except they're on different teams this time around so I could simulate game by game but I'm not gonna do that because I couldn't really be bothered nine to one wow Edmonton got smoked. 
9 to 1, a 2 1 overtime win, 8 to 4, and then 3 to 1. Not nah, Edmonton, you got to disband after that. That's tough. McDavid just casually picked up two goals and eight assists for 10 points in four games because why not? And also, Anaheim's coming back from a 3 1 series deficit. Okay, yeah, they lost, so we're taking on LA now. Like, Anaheim was at one point down 3 1 in the series, but they fought back, but it's not going to be enough. We got the LA Kings in the second round now. If Vegas can continue this dominance, then they're easily going to win a Stanley Cup because what they did to Edmonton makes absolutely no sense. Like, Edmonton should have put up at least a slight fight. So far through the first four games, we've split the series. Game five is an important one, like usual. We're taking that one. Game six, can we close this series out? Yes, we can. And Vegas is off to the conference finals. But I can confidently say I'm surprised that the team we're taking on, the Nashville Predators, somehow after taking down the St. Louis Blues, are going to take down the Colorado Avalanche, and that's who we're matching up against. But of course, we can't take this team lightly. UC Saros is here, Roman Yossi, Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne, Ryan Johansson. I mean, it's not like they're a weak team by any means, so we're definitely going to have our hands full. We're going to be splitting the series so far. Game five, like usual, is an important one. We're taking that one. What's going to happen in game six? Well, we're going to take that one. And now we got the Tampa Bay Lightning in the Stanley Cup final. We're not messing around. We don't need to look at the bracket. We're just going to casually take this in four games. Never mind. We're taking this one in five. If we win game five, of course, please don't blow a 3-0 series lead. It's happening. We're blowing a 3-0 series lead. We were up 3-1 in this series. Connor McDavid is absolutely dominating the postseason, but we're going to blow a 3-0 series lead because why wouldn't we? I'm so concerned. Wow, that happened. That really just happened. 3-0 series lead, and then we drop four straight. Once again, in game seven, Connor McDavid doesn't pick up a point. He did have 34 points in 23 games, though. This is the second time in a game seven when Connor McDavid doesn't show up. Is Connor McDavid not a game seven performer? Is he not clutch? I mean, calling somebody not clutch when they put up 34 points in 23 games is absurd. I mean, 15 goals, 19 assists. He also had three game-winning goals. Yeah, that's just disappointing. So here we go. We're finally on NHL 23. Leon Dreisaitl, Jack Eichel, Zach Hyman on the first line. On the second, we got Evander Kane, Nugent Hopkins, Yamamoto. The defense, honestly, not too bad. The big upgrade in Matias Ekholm. You got Darnell Nurse here, Bouchard. And in between the pipes, of course, you got the two guys, Stuart Skinner, Jack Campbell. I mean, I still got faith in Soupy. I believe Soupy's gonna have a bounce back here, and you guys aren't ready for it. Meanwhile, here's Vegas. I mean, it's kind of hard to bet against these guys. McDavid, Stone, Marcheseau, Barbashev, Chandler, Stevenson, Riley, Smith, Phil the Thrill, Castle, William Carlson, Nick Waugh, William Carrier, Brent Howden, Colasar. No, that's clean right there. That's an elite forward core. You can't convince me Vegas isn't going to be number one in the entire league. I mean, maybe the New York Rangers. No team's better than Vegas right now. And that's a fact. So not only did Vegas not finish number one in the league, they didn't finish number two or three or four or five, sixth. And out of the five teams that were ahead of them, none of them were the New York Rangers. And where are the New York Rangers? Couldn't tell you. 12th in the entire league. And where are the Edmonton Oilers? They missed the playoffs without Connor McDavid. That's how much Connor McDavid means to the Edmonton Oilers. Connor McDavid, the numbers were absolutely fantastic, and you finally cracked 100 points. It took you long enough. 105, 48 goals, 57 helpers. But I gotta know what Jack Eichel did. Eichel, what were you doing in Edmonton for your team to be this bad? I mean, you picked up 92 points, 39 goals, 53 helpers. Dry side will let you down, only picking up 87 points. It also doesn't help that outside the first line, because Zach Hyman was also there because he was plus 21. This team was not good. Like outside of those three guys, this team was very average. But we have one last shot. Jack Eichel already won a Stanley Cup. He did in year number three. McDavid's yet to win one, although he's made it to two Stanley Cup finals and lost in game seven twice. Yeah, that's a tough one to process. Vegas, you have San Jose in the first round. How did San Jose make it all the way to the playoffs? I have no clue. How do they have a very similar record to us? Couldn't answer that question either. But all I know is Vegas is in the playoffs. I'm going to simulate this entire series. We're not going to go game by game here. No, I'm going to simulate this entire series because there's no reason we should lose to the San Jose Sharks of all teams. That was so close. It came all the way down to game seven where we're going to shut out the Sharks. Now we have the Vancouver Canucks. You know what? Same thing. Simulate the entire series because we shouldn't lose to Vancouver. Just like that, we're taking them down in six games. We got the Winnipeg Jets. Honestly, we're on a roll here and I do not want to mess this up. We're just going to simulate the series. We blew a 3-1 series lead. Oh, and who makes the Stanley Cup final? The New York Rangers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Going to simulate through that. McDavid, 21 points in 20 games, 12 goals, 9 assists, not too bad. Yeah, and the Rangers are going to sweep the Jets. McDavid, I guess you're going without a Stanley Cup. It's a tough world out there. It's not fair. Jack Eichel won one year number three with the Edmonton Oilers and you couldn't win when you had two opportunities in Vegas. It's a cold world. What can I say?